The interesting part about this young man is Colorado was never in the picture. Nobody even considered the option that he was going to go there. That was up until recently. Out of nowhere, and it feels like deja vu, the same thing is happening with this kid, this five-star recruit, as it happened with Travis Hunter. Man, oh man, it's been a minute since we've talked about Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Prime Time. Actually, hold on. Now that I think about it, yeah, I think it's been about three weeks since we talked about him. I know three weeks may not seem like a long time to you guys, but there was a time where we was talking about him every single day almost for three or four weeks in a row. The reason for that was, duh, he made the big announcement that he was leaving Jackson State and he was going to Colorado. We talked all about that and also how he got the former number one cornerback and number one player in high school football to transfer with him, and he goes by the name of Travis Hunter. Arguably the greatest recruit to ever go to Colorado, but now Deion Sanders is is going after another five-star recruit. And well, 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 what do you know? This is also the number one cornerback in his respected class of 2023. I think we're starting to see a trend here. All these top cornerbacks, they want to play for Dion, and I don't blame them. I've been following this situation very, and I mean very closely the past couple of weeks, and things are starting to heat up. We're going to talk all about that in tonight's video, and also, we got to talk about another NFL legend that goes by the name of Ed Reed, and yeah, you got to see what he said. For those of you that don't know, Ed Reed is the current head coach at Bethune-Cookman, which is the HBCU, and he's not happy whatsoever. He went on Instagram Live, and let's just say he was not too happy about what was going on. It's going to be a jam-packed video. Get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get whatever you like to eat when you watch a video, and yeah, you already know the intro. If you like college football content, consider subscribing. If you don't like it, well, don't subscribe. All right, Matt, blah, 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 shout up now without further ado let's get into it all right first things first raheem jones sent me this on twitter by the way shout out to you thank you for sending me this and it says how do you rank these 2022 college football playoff head coaches i'm gonna run through this quickly because i think it is an interesting debate at number one obvious it's not even close they got from one and two not even measurable i got kirby smart i'm not even going to explain that because i don't think anybody's gonna argue with that whatsoever two through four is where your argument starts and i'm gonna say at number two i got jim harbaugh reason for that i also think it's fairly simple in the past couple of years he's definitely earned my respect and nobody's done more with less than harbaugh with all the talent ohio state has they should beat michigan every single year and they've lost back-to-back -back years so i gotta give credit to harbaugh with that being said at number three and four mm, do i dare put ryan day at number four I'm just going to give Ron Day the edge and put him at three and Sonny Dykes at four because Ron Day has been coaching slightly longer and he has seen more success. I do want to make this clear. That decision did not come easily, though, because Ron Day chokes in all the big time games. I do want to put him at four, but I'm going to give him the slight edge at three. Thank you for sending me that. And oh, yeah, by the way, for those of you that didn't hear the news, your boy CJ Stroud, like I told you in yesterday's video, he finally declared for the NFL draft. As to why Ohio State fans were having wishful thinking and hoping and actually thought he may come back to Ohio State, I have no idea. I've already talked about that enough. We made a 10-minute video talking about it yesterday, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Not really going to speak on that too much longer. And last but not least, before we get into the prime time situation, we got to talk about the Ed Reed situation. Before I show you this video clip where he is completely turning into a rage monster, I got to give you some context to the situation. Apparently, according to Ed Reed, there was a lot of trash in his office, there was trash around Around, I assume the university and he wasn't happy about it and here's what he had to say on Instagram live Matt wrote a clip I've been mutton and showing it I chose not to but now I'm out here walking with the football team picking up trash but I'm mutton us man get out of here man I should leave I'm not even under contract doing this I'm mutton us man get out of here man they mutt me these didn't clean my guy office when I got here I'm mutton y'all Man, come on, man. Come on, man. All this here was trash in front of me. Who you think got cleared out? That building right there got trash in it. It's trash. What are you talking about? I need no donors to come out and help out because people just want money. That's why I don't have, that's why I don't network. Get out of here, man. Wow. I can't believe he said that. I know he may be feeling it, but uh, at the same time, 
I, I just think some things are better off not being said. Well, actually, let me go back on that statement. If you want to say this to the athletic director or say this to your friend, I don't care. But I just don't understand why you would put this out there on social media. Because I know what's going to happen. A lot of people are going to say this is very unprofessional of him, which I do agree with. It is unprofessional, and it is going to be a bad look. But I understand where he's coming from. And let me elaborate on that. I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, it's a bad look, and if he's complaining this much, he should just leave. But I understand that he wants better for the kids and wants better for the university. Let me give you a better example of what's going on here. This is the equivalent to you cleaning your car, making it real nice, or cleaning your house, or cleaning your room, and somebody comes in and trashes it. That's what's going on here. So what I see in this is a reaction that most people would have if somebody trashed their house, room, or car. Yeah, you're going to be upset. Why is that? Because a lot of people, they take pride in having a clean room or clean car. So with Ed Reed here, I get why he's complaining. He wants better. Check out this comment, though. The problem is brass, and I'm not too sure what brass means, at HBCUs has always tried to sweep things under the rug and hide things instead of being held accountable. Prime dealt with the same issues at JSU, Borg and... Uh, I don't know how to say it, or more concerned with image than results, NFL players by default don't think that way. Look, I don't have too much more to say about this besides I get where he's coming from and I relate to it, but at the same time, I do think it's unprofessional and I don't agree with him putting this on social media. Here's my question Ed Reed. Is putting this on social media gonna make it better? Probably not. And another reason I'm not gonna speak on this too much more is because I really have no idea what's going on there with the program and why there's trash there to be in the first place. The only thing I know is some people was blaming it on the hurricane but apparently the hurricane came through three months ago and the hurricane has nothing to do with trash being in his office once again to put this into a better example so me and you can relate imagine you buy a brand new $65,000 car and there's trash in it yeah you'd be pissed off too let me know your thoughts on that but finally moving on to the main topic of the main encore the main reason cut down to the video we gotta talk about coach prime or not just coach prime but what he's doing in this new five-star recruit mr cormani mclean is the subject of this video he's a cornerback in the class of 2023 six foot two 165 pounds that is kind of skinny but he's a five-star recruit and the number one cornerback in the nation and he's top 10 recruit overall not too shabby why did I say not too shabby like that? It, it's not too shabby. You get it. Sorry for being corny. Anyways, continuing along here, that's besides the point. All you need to know is this dude's a baller. You don't get ranked as a five-star recruit and the number one cornerback for a mistake. The interesting part about this young man is Colorado was never in the picture. Nobody even considered the option that he was going to go there. That was up until recently. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we like to call this? Say it with me now, the Dion effect. Out of nowhere, and it feels like deja vu, the same thing is happening with this kid, this five-star recruit, as it happened with Travis Hunter. Y'all remember what happened with Travis Hunter, right? He was committed to Florida State for what was it, like two years? Then out of nowhere on signing day, he goes, oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to Jackson State. Within the blink of an eye, he shocked everybody. Fast forward in time to our current date, check out this article that was posted about two days ago. Miami reportedly went to visit Cormani McLean on Friday, but he wasn't there. <laughs> You know why he wasn't there? Because he was too busy making snow angels in Colorado's football stadium. You can't make this stuff up. Imagine Mario Cristobal and his entire recruiting staff. They're sitting there going, hey, you know what? We got some free time. Let's go pay our prize possession, our top recruit, five-star cornerback recruit, a visit. They go to his house, knock on the door. He's not there. The next thing they know, they go on social media and he's in a Colorado uniform making snow angels. If you're Mario Cristobal at that point in time, you gotta be crapping your pants. I don't want to go as too far as to saying we'll never see something like this happen ever again because it could happen. I don't know this for a fact, but I highly doubt this. And I mean, I highly, highly, highly doubt we're ever going to see a head coach do what Deion Sanders has done in just the past two or three years alone. The fact that he can flip a five-star recruit, a top cornerback, not one, but two of them, and he probably will continue to do this in the next 10 years, the fact he can flip them within the blink of an eye, it's unreal. You're not going to see this anywhere else where a kid who's already committed to a school will get a phone call from Coach Prime and within 24 hours he'll fly to that stadium and he's already on his visit. And the reason all this is happening so quickly is because these kids, these high school recruits, they trust Coach Prime because he can relate to them. I've said it before, I will continue to say it, he's the definition of a player's coach. And oh yeah, by the way, can't forget to mention, under all these Instagram pics that he posted, Travis Hunter commented and said, duo? Question mark with a ninja emoji. And even Shadur Sanders commented under it. I hate to jump the fence on this, is that how that saying goes? I, I don't know, I think that's how it goes, we're just gonna roll with it. I hate to jump the fence on this, 
but it's looking like this is a done deal. He's going to flip and go to Colorado. And if this does happen, which I do believe it will happen, I've been following this for the past couple of days, like I've said, that will not only be one five-star cornerback, that will be two on Colorado's roster. You may not like Deion Sanders, but you got to respect what he's doing. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh,